R&B Reptiles here, and we have another video for you today. And we're gonna finally finish up, pretty much finish up, <laughs> our racks we're gonna show you. We're gonna talk about some skinks and uh, a couple other things, maybe have a little bit of an outing. So uh, we really appreciate you guys subscribing to us and watching our shows. Also, can you guys do us a huge favor? I know Mel's gonna yell at me for saying that, but um, we're really trying to build our Instagram. So if you can go in there and just follow us on Instagram, it's RB Reptiles with underscores in between all of the different bits there. Uh, it's in our link below. And uh, stay tuned for the rest of the show. What is your middle name? <laughs> yeah. Esther. <laughs> Wine down story time. It really is. It's I did Esther. not know that about you. Yeah. I'm glad I learned that. Yeah. We're here doing podcast. Wine down story time. Ryan, you wanna Woo! you wanna say something? Uh I'm very excited. Super excited? Super excited to be here. He's so excited, <laughs> he's very excited. Yeah, like, oh my god, the excitement. <laughs> this is cool. One of his uh, tools of training that he does to be non-introverted or an extrovert, as some people would say, <laughs> is uh, he'll just start random conversations with strangers. And yeah. it's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> it is the worst kind of small talk. And it, I get it. You have to do that. That's yeah. what normal people do in their life. But for me, I'm like, oh, please just shut up. Oh I, you know what? I'm laughing because... I'm I would I'm 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 with you 100%. I am an introvert that trained herself to be an extrovert. Right. And I'm extra. Yes. <laughs> but, but but I'm an introvert. I I that's my comfort zone. So I'll I'll be on and then I'll be off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I'm out and my my boyfriend starts to, you know a, a a more normal person starts a conversation with a stranger, I'm like, why are you talking to the stranger? <laughs> like why? Now they're talking to us. Now yeah. they want, you know. And I'm like, mm -hmm. just keep it moving. Just keep it moving. You know. That's, and it's so that's annoying. That's a quarter. What are you doing, Ryan? I'm trying to breed some skinks here, man. What are you doing? Some eastern blue tongue skinks. Our melanistic. This is how we set up our skinks when we're trying to breed them. Because we gotta watch them so they don't tear each other apart. Um, the lizard breeding in general is a little violent. So you really wanna pay attention to the animals and not leave them alone while it's happening. So we put them in these bins that they can't get out of and that we can manage them. I try not to do more than two at a time. And um, yeah. Also, they'll like slide all over the place and we used to use like towels and stuff to try to give them traction. I found these like at the dollar store, these little rubber mats that fit perfectly into these bins and it works out great. So if you're thinking about that and you're having a hard time breeding your skinks and they're sliding all over the place because they're on these plastic, these guys are awesome. And you can wash these very easily. Yep. You just take a hose outside and spray them down. Yep. And they just woke up so they're not really being... Yeah, they just woke active. up this last week like week and a half so we're just you know slowly introducing them and they'll switch on eventually and hopefully we'll have some awesome eastern babies and we have northerns as well all the northerns here will be getting paired up too but right now focusing on these guys betty morgan had a question uh why or how can you tell the sex of a blue tongue skink so it's a little difficult um you can't just pop them like you can a snake so uh, well at least you shouldn't well yeah just we'll just leave that you can't pop them like a snake <laughs> um, so we kind of look at the body shape um, which is a good indicator but it's not a hundred percent because what you'll want to see in a female is sort of wider hips a n more narrow head see how this guy's got a big beefy head Comparative, we'll put them side by side. This is a proven male and a proven female. And males will generally have this guy lost his tail a long time ago, but a long, thin tail. But that doesn't always hold true. It's a good indicator, but like when I look at this, it's, which is a proven female, his tail looks a little male to me. But the hips are, are kind of wide, but not too wide. 
But this girl. Her, the head looks right for a female, so like you could go, you know, either way. But she dropped some babies last year, so we know that she's a female. And you basically, that's a, your best guess, and then you won't really know until sometimes uh, if a male goes to the bathroom, they'll avert their hemipenes and you'll be able to see them. And that's a really good indicator <laughs> whether or not it's a male or female. And then you just got to put them together to try to breed them, really, and see how they react to one another. Uh, males will go in with a female and they'll try to bite them on the sides like this and get them to lift their tail up and that's a good indicator that's male behavior for breeding. Can you show us how you would bite on the side of one of them or? You want me to do it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm gonna let them do the biting. <laughs> All right, and so there's a few that we don't know what they are, if they're male or female. We have guesses, and we know that fun we're trying to. Figure we know out. that this guy's a male. We know that this guy's a male. This is one we produced two years ago, and I'm guessing at its sex and seeing how it's reacting. But right now they're just a little sleepy, so they're not really doing anything. See the arms there, just laid back, like <laughs> I'm too tired to get out of bed. <laughs> so uh, hopefully we got a bunch of animals that we produced two years ago that are up to size now and uh, this year we get to figure out what they are and hopefully produce a bunch of babies. I think, this is, I think this is a pretty good design. I mean, he looks happy. I'm looking, well, this is probably a little taller. It's like longer arms. And a snake hook. Don't forget your yarmulke. Dang, dog. What? A little snake hook. Maybe my beard's a little longer. Man, I'm a terrible drawler. We're framing this. What's up guys? Ben from r &B Reptiles. And we're out here in the sun. It's a nice day. And we're gonna be making some racks. Really excited. Uh, so here we go. So it did take us a long time to put them together just because, you know, we're just two regular guys and we have you know, daytime jobs as well as doing the YouTube and the snakes and all that. So we kind of hit this up, you know, maybe a couple hours a week uh, after work and some weeks we couldn't make it happen. So it took a little while, but we got the racks done. We just have to run the, the belly heat and I'm going to explain that. And uh, that's it really. So these are good to go and they're really sturdy and they're a lot heavier than you would expect making them out of wood but we have big cement tubs here i'm going to pull one of these out real quick and uh we found these cement tubs from ace hardware and they're pretty thick they're huge they're the biggest uh, tub i could find the biggest tubs we can find we like how deep they are so they're uh, just a little bit over three feet by two feet, roughly. Um, so it's pretty good for a, for a skink, for this size, for one skink at a time. It's about nine inches deep. Yeah, they're about nine inches deep. So you don't, when you have skinks, they don't have to have a really deep enclosure. Some people like that, but what we find is if they sit on the side or the edge of the tub, like standing up a bit, after a while, it can kind of hurt their backs. So if you don't have it too tall, it's probably better. We liked it 
to be a bit deep because we do put a pretty thick substrate in uh, with the Pro Cocoa and that allows them to burrow and we find that they do burrow a lot. So a couple things that we're going to do with these tubs is uh, not just have the, the bottom here, but we're also going to run belly heat like I was mentioning. And how we did that was Ryan and I were kind of thinking of ideas so that the belly heat wouldn't, we're using heat tape, so the belly heat wouldn't rub on the tub. And we got this flooring. So we were at one of the big box stores and we found this flooring and the flooring snaps together like this, right? So what we found out or what we were thinking about is this, there's this little lip on both sides as we do like this. If we cut it and we flipped it over, you'd run a little groove here. I don't know if Ryan, if you can see that groove well or not. You can see a little bit. So there's a groove there and that's plenty thick enough for heat tape to run through. So, and also uh, these little ridges here on the other side make it almost like a ramp going up. We did this and so that we didn't have to buy a router. Yes, we did it so we didn't have to buy a router. Um, we thought it would save us some time. So Ryan, I don't know if you can really see in here well, um, but you can see that it's towards the back of the, the bins, towards the back of the setups. And I can turn a little extra light in there. So the back of the tub, there's an extra layer here that we haven't put together. You can see that it creates a little groove here and then we have six inch heat tape and it's gonna run right between there. And it's just gonna run, come down to the next bin and run across that, go down to the next this, slot. This is fiberglass, so really slippery. Yeah, it shouldn't, we shouldn't have any peeling or cracking or anything like that and they, the tub should ride over this real nice and easy. And we did it on both sides so that the tub will be supported but yet we'd still have that strip there um, to make sure that it's underneath of the tub. Also that heat tape, some people might say, hey, does, isn't it gonna catch this on fire because it's wood? The heat tape doesn't get that hot. To get to a 92 degree hot spot, you know, it's gonna be warm, but it's not gonna be uh, electrifyingly hot. Um, so we're not really worried about that. Last thing we said before the uh, house burned down. Good grief. <laughs> the, hot, the tea table will probably get to 110, which is not the combustion level of wood, so. <laughs> <laughs> Science. Okay, now on top here, we have, uh, we just built a frame, and then we used- Hardware cloth? Hardware cloth, it's called. So this is quarter inch hardware cloth, or maybe it's half inch hardwood cloth. And it's a metal grate that you just, we just stapled to the you know, inside of this. And it just uh, allows for a lot of ventilation, but also gives us the opportunity to put a UVB light on top so that we can have UVB for the skinks. So another reason that we left these bins tighter is because we wanted to fit more on the rack. So you see there's not a huge gap here. And that's why we went with belly heat instead of like a big bulb heating lamp because we wouldn't be able to fit in there. And yeah, the heat lamp would throw off way more heat to maybe catch a fire. <laughs> yeah, the heat lamp would, it would create a lot of heat up here. So you'd need a lot of ventilation on top. And we wanted to try to maximize our space rather than uh, making it too tight. So for the UVB bulbs, we have these guys here, they're pretty uh, slim. They're from Arcadia. Can't get the focus because of the hand. So these are Arcadia lights. You see that they're not uh, terribly tall, which is good, so they fit in real well. And it's UVB. I can actually feel the vitamins going into my skin right now. <laughs> Just kidding. So Arcadia, they're like the number one brand out there in the reptile world for the lights. And they make a really awesome light. And I know that the, you know, you have to go through all this stuff to give your animals UVB, but we think that it's gonna be a good thing. We try to give our skinks enough calcium. And sometimes if they're big, they need a lot of calcium and they may not eat a ton. 
So if they're not eating a ton, then it's hard for us to give them that extra calcium. And there's a bunch of different ways that you do it. Uh, you can give them eggs with the shell. You can give them uh, small rodents that have bones in them. Um, but we also do the, you know, we do vitamins and the calcium powder on every meal. But we want to make sure they get enough. So we're trying to add it, the UVB. And the only way to do it is in a rack system like this or into a large enclosure uh, that you can have that space. We don't think that there's anything wrong with keeping the skinks in a rack system, but you gotta make sure that they're getting enough of the vitamins and calcium. And we decide just to you know mix it up a little bit and give them the UVB. So these fit in here, there's plenty of space over top. They don't create a lot of heat, um, almost no heat to be honest, but we wanted to make sure there was a good ventilation You guys can see the light in there. And we are just going to set all these up. And we still got to run the electricity a bit behind it and run the heat tape. So, but these things are 90% done and we're calling it quits on the project. Um, obviously when they're done, we're calling it quits on the videoing of it because we wanted to showcase it and say that, hey, we're doing it. So our skinks are waking up now and it's time to start moving them up into these. Oh, hello. You're so nice. This is beautiful girl we produced a couple years ago. Love her, this is our chocolate line. <laughs> <laughs> so just wanna take a minute right now to thank our newest Patreon member, Betty Morgan. She's uh, a fan of the skink, so we brought out one of our females. I believe this is the female that actually her baby came from. So that's pretty cool. Um, also, I just wanted to let you guys know that we're headed to Canada at the end of this week. Uh, we're going to be shooting some video at the expo and visiting Billy from Mutation Creation and seeing our friends Carrie and Barrows from KV Reptiles. So that's going to be super exciting. Yes, super exciting. <laughs> so check that out. We also just started a RMB Reptiles Facebook group so that we can all talk together because it's hard to talk to people on YouTube. We just get to talk at the camera and you get to listen to us. So you can check that out if you're into Facebook. Uh, RMB Reptile Friends is what it's called. Uh, so check that out. And also, if you're not on our Instagram, please check it out. We're trying to get up to 10,000 people on there, which is a lot. We have 1,400. We're almost there. <laughs> And yes, that is it. Thank you. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. We want to thank our sponsor, Warner Brothers, for making this possible. You guys are great. Uh, bring back Animaniacs, please. Have a good day. Oh, oh my dog. That's the, the snake thing. The the intro. Oh. Not bad. <laughs> Except for that I'm not a good drawler, so. Um. Could the handles of our snake hooks be the hilts of swords? So it can go with our new theme? Um, that sounds like an awesome idea, actually. I don't know. That's a great idea. I'm gonna have to write that down. We camp. Oh man, and we could get like a modified like sheath that goes over your back so you can pull it out like a broadsword or something. Or like even a hip sheath I can slide into. Oh man, I got ideas. This is Rumpelstiltskin. Oh! I need to weave me golden threads. She is chonky. Chonky. Word combining chunky and honky. Are we doing a word of the day now? <laughs> Did I get to make up words? <laughs> Brought to you by Fast Actin' Tenactin'.